Melchizedek royal garment upon him that his brothers were jealous of. He had the tunic of the priesthood given to him by his father and his brothers. They were jealous of that, were they not? You see, Judah provides the king, but Joseph provides the Zadik, the Malkit Zadik, the birthright and the kingdom. You see, we are living in the time of Malkit Zadik. Joseph, are we not? The time of Joseph is at hand. Bereshit, Genesis chapter 48, verse 15, it is written, Bless the lads, Ephraim Veche Manashe. Bless the lads, Ephraim and Manasseh. Let my name, whose name? Let my name, you mean the name of Israel, Jacob Israel. Yes, that name belongs to who? The sons of Joseph. So, so you're telling me that the name of Israel, it doesn't belong to Judah. No, the scripture says the name Israel, biblical Israel, is under the administration of Joseph's sons. Mm. So you have to watch out for the lies and the counterfeit. First Chronicles chapter 5 verse 1. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, he was indeed the firstborn. But because he defiled his father's bed, his birthright, what's the birthright? The land, the land was given to the sons of Joseph. Does that tie in with what I just read in Genesis 48 verse 15? The son of Israel, so that the genealogy is not listed according to the birthright. Yet Judah acted, the Hebrew word here is gabar. It means insolently over his brothers. Judah acted insolently. The Hebrew word there is gabar over his brothers. And from him came a ruler, although the birthright was Joseph's. Judah brings forth Moshiach Yahusha, yet the land can only be given to the house of Joseph, and the house of Joseph are the only ones that are entitled to call that land Israel. Oh, the Bible. That Bible sure does get in the way, doesn't it? Man. Man, that Bible sure does get in the way. The kingdom is is given to the ten tribes of Israel. It's never given to Judah. 1 Kings 11 verse 30. Melachim Aleph 11.30 Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Shlomo, Solomon, and I will give ten tribes to you to Yerovam, to Jeroboam. I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, out of Solomon's hand, and give it to you, ten tribes. And to his son I will give one tribe, that my servant David may always have a lamp before me in Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself, to put my name there. So I will take you and you shall reign over all your heart's desires and you shall be king over Israel. What does this tell you? Judah cannot, never will be able to build the kingdom of Yahweh. That Bible sure gets in the way, doesn't it? You see, you wonder why there's been all these books in the 20th century. What what are some of those books? Eight things that happened before the coming of... Something in them. I mean, everyone's predicting timelines and prophecies, right? What are some of those big books in the 80s? They... 
right. And, you know, we've got all of these predictions and timelines. And now in the Hebrew Roots movement and the Messianic movement, calendar timelines. Oh, this is going to happen and that is going to happen. And it's all based upon what? Well, the birth of Israel in 1948. It's all based upon a false premise. So therefore, their prophecies will continue to fail and fail and fail. And people's faith begins to diminish and diminish and diminish. Oh, yes, yes, yes. They said that last year. Oh, yes, yes, yes. They said that 10 years ago. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 40 years ago, we thought Jesus was going to return. Based upon what? The misreading and the false premise that biblical Israel was established in 1948 when really it was the conjuring of the doctrine of demons. So, biblical prophecy is going to begin to be fulfilled when what? When Judah sees the need to unite with Joseph, the Malkit Zedek, and establish Israel. Then, when? Only then. You see, it's not the other way around. Legally, according to the Torah, you know that thing that everybody's, you know, saying that, you know, well, that Torah to the tribes, you know, they're, they're not into the Torah. What? <laughs> wow, okay. You mean we rightly divide the Torah? Yeah, that very Torah that says what? According to the Torah, Judah can't own any land without the Malkitzedic administration of Joseph. That's what the Bible says. Judah has tried to seize the birthright, the land by force from Joseph. That's why Bible prophecy continues to fail time and time again. The state of Israel is really a confused nation pretending to be a wandering people race. The state of Israel denies the existence of the Israelite people whom they consider simply as the bridgehead to the Jewish people. The state of Israel is biological in origin with fragments of nationalized occult religion, as we saw by the quotations of their very text. The ancient Judean or modern Israeli who were or are citizens of political entities The Bible says nothing about either of these because Israel is not merely a political entity, is it? The Zionism of the Jews of the Israeli state is not the Zion of the millennial kingdom or the Zion of the former Israelite theocracy. The state of Israel is national. It's racial and compared internationally. Awakened eternal Israel is without nationality, but it is transnational and without national racial comparison. It's trans-tribal. Yeshayahu, chapter 10, verse 20, Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 20, it is written. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such has escaped of the house of Jacob. I... I'm so sick and tired of people talking about the remnant of Judah. That's not what it says. The remnant isn't Judah. The scripture says the remnant is who? Israel. Yet I am ridiculed and people come against and call me all kinds of names when I come and just quote that scripture. Say, no, 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 the remnant is Israel. Oh, 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 that's anti-Semitic. So now reading the scriptures is anti-Semitic. Especially that section in Giliana, Revelation, about the synagogue of Satan. Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 13. It talks of the remnant tithe. The remnant tithe is to be harvested to form the leadership of the end time Malkitzedic priesthood under the overall leadership of Joseph the Malkitzedic who is hidden in the nations. Judah can only be called Israel when? Judah can only be called Israel 
when the tribes are united as one under 